TCU and Kansas, our big swing game, um, really the only game all year that we've we've really disagreed on. And it, admittedly, neither of us really felt good about either team. Um, we didn't know what stadium they were going to play in until the game started because contracts weren't signed uh, as of Friday night. Uh, but TCU takes it to Kansas. Huge bounce back win for, for TCU. Um, I think the season's officially dead for Kansas. I'm going to go on a quick rant on the Kansas administration. Oh, and man. I guess to a lesser extent, what, the Hunt family and Arrowhead, but that's not their job necessarily. How on earth, how on earth do you not have that agreement in place? That should be done months out. Like, how do you wait till that late to say, okay, we're good to play college football or football here? That's absolutely inexcusable. And Kansas, look, they did have to do a stadium renovation project. I'm not denying that. They could have also just built a new stadium, too, and just played at their old one for a couple more years or did what Northwestern did. Northwestern, shoot, they're completely building a new stadium. And they just said, you know what? We got this practice field that doesn't seat a lot of people, but it's right off Lake Michigan. It's nice. And they've renovated into a, not a huge home field advantage, but it does feel like home and it is on their campus. And granted, as an outsider, I love the concept of college football being played at Arrowhead Stadium because it is a great stadium. Sorry, Brandon, I know how you feel about the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. But it is a great stadium and it's a great place to watch a football game. And I don't blame Kansas for making that decision for a couple of seasons. The problem is, they, the administration didn't think ahead, Brandon. They didn't think ahead. And that's, to me, inexcusable. And for Lance Leifold and that team, that can't be fun thinking throughout the week. And we knew it probably was going to get done. But why should that ever even be a story? That is just inexcusable. So shame on the Kansas administration. I think that did play a factor on Saturday. There's no excuse playing the way they did. Um, and I'll quickly to give TCU that proper credit after a tough loss in a rivalry game against a team they do not like out of Dallas and the Ponies last week in SF SMU. They come right back and put together really a nice road victory. They proved me completely wrong. I thought Kansas would protect their home field. Then again, though, Brandon, I was operating under the assumption as well that, you know, they weren't in limbo on where they were going to play to. So maybe I'll, I'll give myself a little bit of a break. Yeah, I. That's a, a it's such a, a weird spot to be in. I mean, I got to imagine. I would have imagined that something would have been signed before they even announced this, let alone we're twenty four hours to game time. Um, but outstanding stuff for for TCU. I'm trying. There we go. Um, Jalen Daniels, five touchdowns, eight interceptions, fifty three percent completion percentage, um, averaging one hundred sixty one yards a game. Um. Boy, there's been a lot of talk in the college football space about NIL and values and maximizing your value. It feels like Jalen Daniels, um, it, his best days are behind him. That That's an awful place to be for a guy that was widely um, expected to be one of the top quarterbacks in the Big 12. He's been bad. He hasn't been great. His Kansas team has lost by one possession in three of their four losses, TCU. And in that TCU game, it's not like they weren't uncompetitive for most of that game. They were right there towards the last five minutes or so. And QB play, I think, has played a factor. Mistakes played a factor. Obviously, eight interceptions just cannot happen from the quarterback position through um, that month of September. And defensively, I don't even think the defense has been bad, but boy, it's just been the timing of some of the plays they've given up that's been more painful for them. To have that big lead at West Virginia and just not be able to get enough stops at the end top. Illinois was a very winnable game, and that's an Illinois team that, you know, was competitive enough against Penn State, even though it didn't feel like they had a shot in the end. But what a disappointing year for Lance Leifold and company. Lance Leifold's still a good football coach. I don't care. I know they're one and four. He is a good football coach. I still think they have the right staff in place. The fact that 
we're talking about how stunned we are. Kansas is one and four instead of being, you know, that's just how it is because it's Kansas that shows how far they've come. But boy, it feels like they did not cross uh, enough T's and dot enough I's before the season. And well, what I keep coming back to is this felt like a ceiling year for Kansas. It felt like, all right, we're going to see what, what Kansas can achieve. They, they got their senior quarterback back. Uh, so far, he's been healthy. That's always been the, the, the question mark. You got Lance Leipold, who's got a whole roster full of his guys now. I mean, there's no inheriting any of this roster anymore. Uh, we're going to see what Kansas can do. And they've taken a huge step back. And it's very, very troublesome because I don't, they don't recruit that well. So once Jalen Daniels does leave, does it? how does it get better? I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel here. I don't either, Brandon. I think for Kansas, again, you got to keep grinding. You got to hope that you find some better turnouts. And I'm not blaming the Kansas fan base necessarily. Um, they didn't have a great turnout at Arrowhead Stadium yesterday. Grant, that's a huge stadium. That would not be <laughs> outside of Kansas, Mizzou. I don't think they're going to sell out Arrowhead, even no. though Iowa State fans, I'm sure, are determined they'll, they'll push to it. make a run in November. And don't get me wrong, Colorado, I think, could make a pretty decent run, at least filling up that stadium a little bit. But there's still a good amount of season to go. One and four, we'll see how they bounce back. But what a disappointing month of September to go winless, uh, where on paper, frankly, I thought those numbers would be flipped. I really thought they'd be four and one around this time. And I put them in our second tier in preseason with, Kind of Iowa State, them and Iowa State, I kind of lumped together because I liked the potential of this team, but I really underestimated, I think, the fact of just the weirdness of the stadium situation, um, their inability to execute down the stretch, I think, has been the number one story so far, though. 